in the morning when I rise, in the morning when I rise, in the morning when I rise, give me Jesus, give me Jesus, give me Jesus, you can have all this world, but give me Jesus, and when I come to die, oh, and when I come to die, oh, and when I come to die, give me Jesus, give me Jesus, give me Jesus, you can have all this world, but give me Jesus, give me Jesus, give me Jesus, you can have all this world, but give me Jesus. Amen, and thank you for joining me this morning. It's starting a little late as uh, we've gotten into the habit of, um, but so glad to be with you. We missed last week because uh, I just didn't sleep, and so I'm glad to be back because this is something that I enjoy, and I'm grateful for those who join me on a Sunday morning to get me in the spirit of Jesus, to get me um, focused on the sharing the message for the day. Uh, as a pastor, uh, this has become an important routine for me to start my morning with about 10 minutes of sharing a message and sharing a song. Um, so, so good to see all of you. Morning from Kentucky. So, so glad that we can connect. We actually had a man join us from uh, New York on our men's Bible study yesterday on Zoom and uh, somebody joining us for the first time. So it's a reminder of how cool it is that we can be a church without walls and that we can connect here and around the world, um, both in person and uh, online. So, so good to see all of you and know that we pray for you. And uh, so glad that you can join me this morning. Let's share in a spirit of a fellowship. Let's share, share in the spirit of God and Jesus Christ uh, as we enter into a time of prayer. Let's, let us pray this morning. Uh, God, we just turn our hearts to you and we are so blessed that on a Sunday morning we can be reminded of the gift of your son Jesus and by his Holy Spirit, God, that we can focus our hearts and that we can trust in you and in your plan and your purpose for our lives. Because God, indeed, it can feel so overwhelming uh, in this world and, and the, the trials and the, the tribulations that we face each and every day. And when we hear the news of, of wars and, and rumors of wars and all of these concerns, God, we, we wonder what to do. And so we turn to you and we turn to, to your word and we are so blessed. Help us not to take it for granted that we can come to you, that we need no intercessor, that we can come to you directly through your son Jesus and by his Holy Spirit. God, what a tremendous blessing that we have the firm foundation of our faith and the scripture and the, the songs um, and the stories and the message of your word and your Holy Spirit, God, to guide us and direct us wherever we might go. God, indeed, we trust that our future is yet even brighter than our past, for that is the hope and that is the promise that we have in you and in your word. God, and we do trust that you prepared a place for us, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. God, help us to set our sights on that hope. Help us to work towards the goal of the eternal life, God, and not to be satisfied with the things of this world and to trust that you have a plan and a purpose and that, behold, you make all things new. God, we pray for each one and we ask a blessing upon each one in the ministry of your church, God, and anyone within the sound of my voice, we ask that this might be a blessing as it is a blessing to me this morning. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And thank you all for joining with me again. And what a blessing to have an audience here, even sitting here on my back porch. And the light is increasing. You know, we started this on an Easter Sunday morning 
back in the beginning of the COVID pandemic, and I've tried to continue it. My son is not joining with me any morning our li- every, in the mornings anymore. Our lives have gotten so busy, and he has a big role at the in-person service. But um, I'm just glad, and I feel a blessing, and I do this for myself, like I say. Um, I do this so I can have a blessing as a pastor as we begin a Sunday morning, so I can get into the Spirit and into the Word. So I'm going to lift up to you all today, this morning, uh, for this little group, I'm going to lift up our second scripture. Today we're talking about the uh, woman um, Mary in Luke's Gospel anointing Jesus' feet with oil before the Passover. But um, in the Old Testament text, I'm looking at Isaiah, in Isaiah in chapter 43, and hear now the word of the Lord, where it says, Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, do not remember the former things, or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness, and rivers in the desert. So we're going to lift up that lesson for our early morning group this morning. Behold, do not consider the former things. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. Behold, I am about to do a new thing. Do you not perceive it? I will make rivers in the desert, God says. Now, what does that mean? That means when we find ourselves in a barren place, when we find ourselves in a, in a wilderness, when we find ourselves in a time where we're tempted to despair and wonder what the future might bring, do we trust in our God to make a river in the desert? Do we trust in our God to do a new thing, something that, that we cannot even perceive? Does God know? Is, is, God, um, is, is, is God in control of these events in the world? Does God have a larger plan and a purpose? That's what the Bible says. The Bible says that God knows the outcome, that God knows the destination. And so if we, would to feel, if we ever to feel stuck, then we are forgetting how far we've come. You know, my wife will, will say that to me all the time. She'll say, stop and, and smell the roses. She said, you're always so focused on uh, how things could be better. And, you know, you forget to remember how far that we've come. And we've come a long ways. And, that's, and, and so the promise that's inherent, if we know that, that God has brought us thus far, then we know that God will make a way somehow. And that's what our lesson today from Isaiah is saying, that God will make even a river in the desert. It says, um, I will make a new thing and put the former things behind you. Do not remember the former things. And I think that's a, a tremendous lesson. You know, they say that the past is a, is a canceled check. The future is a, a promissory note. Only today is cash in the hand. Um, or we say that the things, you know, what, is, uh, what, what are the, the things that are not my business? The past, the future, and what other people think. Uh, those are already aphorisms. But why do we repeat those aphorisms? Well, because um, it helps us to have a better life. If I'm not carrying the burden of the past or of the future or worried about what other people are thinking, well, that means that I can, can live my life not carrying the weight. I can turn these questions over to God. A friend of mine uh, talks about having a, a God box. I don't know that that's a, a literal box or just a, a metaphorical box, but he suggests that if there's something that, that's burdening us down, he'll, he'll say, take it and put it in the God box. Put it in your God box, he'll say. And what does he mean by that? Well, he means give it over to God, right? If we can identify what it is and and where is our burden and what is is weighing us down, once we can identify that, well, the next step is to turn that over to God. Put it in your God box. And I think that's what the scripture is saying when it says, do not remember, do not consider the former things or remember the things of old. Behold, I am about to do a new thing. Do you not perceive it? Well, God is saying to us, in this scripture that we don't have to uh, worry about what the future will bring based on what we've seen in the past. Yes, that's what we do as human beings, but as people of faith, as those who, who trust in God, we can trust that God will do a new thing in the future and that we don't have to carry the past into the future. 
So we've had some um, things in our uh, personal life. Nikki has reminded me, um, she'll point around and say, well, look, how it seems like a lot of people are, uh, that we used to know are, um, are, 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 are no longer with us or are moving away. And, and we'll look at that and we say, well, this is a turning of a page. This is a closing of a chapter of the past. And uh, we perceive this and we think, well, look at how God works. God is turning the page on the past and opening a door into an even brighter future. That is the promise of our God. Do we trust? Do we believe? Do we believe that God would not get us this far just to leave us hanging? So that's the early lesson for today, that the Old Testament lesson, do not consider the things of old. Do not remember the past. Behold, I'm about to do a new thing. What a good word for this morning. And later in our, our second service, um, either online or in person, we'll talk about uh, Mary who anointed Jesus' feet. This is the last Sunday before Palm Sunday. So we'll consider these themes in our morning service. And again, what a blessing that we can join together. Thank you for watching this morning and connecting uh, with me. This is a great way for me as the pastor to get into the Word and to start my day. So thanks for joining me. And uh, we're going to go out as we do um, on a song. And the song that we're going to go out on this morning as we begin our Sunday mornings, and I do hope to see you uh, at our 10 a.m. service this morning, either in person or online. But let's go out on this good old song. It says, Trust and Obey. It says, When we walk with the Lord In the light of His Word What a glory He sheds on our way While we do His good will He abides with us still And with all who Trust and obey, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. So glad to see you all this morning, and uh, we'll just uh, finish with that this morning to be Reminded that our job is only to trust and obey. Let's let God be responsible for the outcome. Let us not worry. The Bible tells us not to worry and not to fear. And God is in control. Do we believe that? Do we believe what our faith teaches, that uh, God has a larger plan and a purpose? I do. I do. I think it's the prescription for what ails us. So uh, let's go out now on a word of prayer as we close. And again, uh, great to see you. I hope this service can be a blessing to you this morning. Uh, God, we are, are so blessed and, and we trust in you. And now we ask that your love and, and the peace of your son, Jesus Christ, and the um, communion of your Holy Spirit will guide us and direct us today and each and every day as we go forth. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Good to see you all.